build me up. Buttercup baby just to let me down. Mess me around in a waste of war. You never call baby when you Greetings one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. You know, one thing that I don't think I ever do on my channel, I might have done it once or twice, uh, usually when I come back from Portland, uh, but a lot of other YouTubers seem to do is recent acquisitions videos, you know, stuff that they've recently picked up and purchased at stores. And I almost never do that kind of stuff because a lot of my uh, playlist videos at the end of each month are recently acquired items. And so that playlist video kind of serves that purpose. But, uh, you know, I have been on such a buying spree lately um, that I thought I'd do a, a separate video just, just for that. Just to give you guys more content, more stuff to watch. Yay, time wasting. Uh, as much as uh, what I've picked up might look like I'm totally flush with cash, uh, about at least half of it is uh, proceeds from stuff that I have sold to stores. So trade credit has paid for half of what, what you're going to see here. Uh, now, the mess of acquisitions that you'll see in today's video uh, come from several different sources, actually. Uh, there's the usual purchases that I've made from House of Records and Epic Seconds, the local stores uh, here in the Eugene area, and these are the ones that I've gotten uh, through the uh, trade-in, trade credit, when I sold stuff to the local stores. Uh, there's also a couple of eBay lots that I bought recently, uh, one or two of which I think I mentioned in recent videos, uh, bargain bag videos specifically. Uh, but there's another handful of these I picked up at a store up in the Salem area that I had a chance to go to recently, a record store up there. I had heard about it for a while. I'd never gotten a chance to visit it, but uh, I got the opportunity. A couple weeks ago, uh, my mother wanted to get together for lunch with a couple of her uh, knitting friends. And uh, let's see, two of them are fully vaccinized, and uh, including my mother, and the third is halfway vac vaccinated. Did I just say the word vaccinized? Anyway, and I am halfway vaccinated as well, yay. So we figured it was safe enough to, you know, go there masked up except when we were eating, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, but yes, I, I went to the store. It's a pretty decent store. I don't know if the guy buys used product more, uh, more quickly than he can vet it and price it and put it on the shelves, or if he's just a disorganized guy by nature, because there were almost as many, if not more, CDs unsorted and unpriced in cardboard boxes on the floor than there were actually priced and set out on the racks. So uh, I found some good stuff. I mean, he was willing to. A very nice guy, and it's a solo operation. He runs the whole place himself. So, and, you know, he, he doesn't want to pay for another employee, but, I mean, considering the state of the store, I think it would behoove him or benefit him to uh, bring on uh, at least one person to help him uh, organize and stuff. But anyway, uh, and he offered to price anything that I... I found in the cardboard boxes that hadn't been priced yet so and that was about it turned out to be about half the stuff that I came home with uh, from that store so I don't know that I see myself going back to that store specifically uh, just because you know when I go into a retail store I hope to actually you know I like to see stuff organized and priced you know so but uh, I enjoyed and I it was worth visiting the store for, uh, at least once so who knows I might decide to go back there at some point if uh, convenience allows it but anyway the CDs are all kind of jumbled together. I don't have them s grouped by where I bought them, so uh, partly because uh, I can't remember where I bought some of them. But anyway, and, and yes, they are all CDs. I was definitely in the CD buying mode when I was um, in the stores the last few weeks. I'm not sure what it is. Part of it has to do with my mood in general, and uh, it it's just also seems to be easier to find good CDs that are worth the money than it is to, to find vinyl records that are worth the money. So. You definitely get more bang for your buck when you're buying CDs in general. Uh, and also it depends on, usually when I go into a store for the first time, I am not in a vinyl mood. Unless it's a really, really well curated store, a very, very well taken care of store. And this one, I've seen more neat and tidy stores, let's just put it that way. But anyway, I've got a lot of CDs to go through, so without further ado, let's just get on with it. Uh, first one here is Little Village. Uh, this one. Another YouTuber brought this up recently, and I, I had heard about this group back in the day. This was 1992. I had heard about these guys, but I, what I didn't know at the time was this was a supergroup featuring uh, John Hyatt, Ry Cooter, and Nick Lowe. And I'm not particularly into Nick Lowe or John Hyatt, but I have recently become uh, acquainted with and uh, appreciative of the music of Ry Cooter, so I figured this was worth picking up. This was $1. 
And uh, these next two CDs were I bought at the store up in Salem, and both are ones that I had had before and got rid of in a uh, Space Crunch CD purge, and, but I decided to pick them up again. This first one is by a group called Pound, and the, the CD is called Same Old Life. I loved it back in the day, and as I said, my space was limited at the time, so this was one of the CDs that didn't make the cut. But I saw it there at the store, and reading back through the track listing, I could remember three or four of the songs just by their, their song titles. They just came back to mind, so that I took that as a clue that I should get the CD and bring it back into my collection. And uh, this is one of the few in this group that I have listened to since I brought them home, and this was well worth it. I am so glad I reacquired this one and brought it home. It's great, great alt-rock, po mm, post-grunge, sort of. Uh, good, good stuff if, if you happen to find it. And this one is by a group called Remy Zero. This is The Golden Hum. And Remy Zero is probably most famous for performing the theme song from the TV series Smallville. It's a song called Save Me, and it is on this album. A couple of other great songs on here as well. Glorious Number One and Perfect Memory are two other great tracks on there, so great album. And a couple ones, I think I had this one before a long time ago, and I didn't keep it for very long, and I have no idea why. It is Soul by Seal, a great covers album of soul classics from the 60s and 70s. I mean, you know, how can you not like Seal's voice, for one thing? But yeah, some great, great songs on here, and yeah, this one, I think this one was in the $1 section also. So yeah, it was very much, very much well worth the money for that. And another $1 CD was Breathe by Faith Hill. I had never checked the CD out before, and of course, pretty much everybody knows the, the title track, Breathe. Great, great country song, and I had never checked out Faith Hill before, so I decided to give it a try. And uh, another $1 CD was actually a CD-DVD combo. Josh Groban in concert, uh, and yeah, it's like for one dollar for two discs, a, a CD and a DVD. How can you beat that? And I've, I'm pretty much a, I think I have Josh Groban's complete discography now. I decided I, I've gone that far in on Josh Groban. Might as well get the concert uh, album. And then this one, this might have been the same YouTuber that uh, mentioned Little Village before, and in another recent video he talked about Bela Fleck. Uh, most often with uh, his group, the Flectones, but this is actually a Bela Fleck solo project, Perpetual Motion. This is um, adaptations of classical pieces, and yeah, Bela Fleck, if you're if you're not familiar with him, is an a virtuoso banjo player. And you know, just when you think that banjo is a one-dimensional instrument, listen to somebody like Bela Fleck, and your perceptions will be thrown out the window. But uh, yeah, he he talked this album up pretty well. This this YouTuber that I uh, mentioned. Uh, so yeah, I decided I had to get that one. Then uh, these next two I know I picked up at the store in Salem. This first one I've been kind of looking for ever since I saw it briefly at uh, House of Records and it was gone. But it is uh, Sinatra and Jobim, the complete recordings. Uh, they made two albums back in the day, in the, in the 60s I believe, and this collects all the tracks from those two albums and maybe some outtakes as well. Uh, so yeah, I was looking for that one. A couple little scuffs on this one, but uh, I, I think it was worth the money. And then this one is quite possibly the one I am most looking forward to listening to. I haven't listened to this one yet. It is a 1985 album by Chet Atkins. It's called Stay Tuned. And uh, it just something about the cover art intrigued me. I don't know what it is. Sometimes it's just I just get a feeling or a vibe from the album cover. And, and, and also, weird as it might seem, the way that the track listing on the back of the cover is designed. I, I, I kind of like that visual element. I'm kind of intrigued by it. But uh, some of the uh, track, list, uh, track titles here, uh, The Cricket Ballet, Cosmic Square Dance, uh, A Mouse in the House. So, yeah, I w really wanted to check this one out. I, I, for some reason, I was, as I said, I was just attracted to it when I saw it. And when I listen to it, I will obviously tell you what I think of it in a playlist video. And then uh, Daryl Hall and John Oates, their album, Ooh Yeah. I've got their four albums preceding this, which had pretty much the biggest hits of their career on them. And so I decided to pick this one. This one was, was in the dollar section, I believe, or maybe it was two fifty. <laughs> yeah, big spender, right? And then I filled the last gap in my Not a Surf collection, not counting their covers album, if I had a hi-fi. But yeah, this one, um, this is You Know Who You Are. And I have listened to this one. Very, very good album. Uh, I, I haven't had a, a bad Not a Surf album yet. They're all just great. Oh, I picked up a couple of uh, albums by Bruce Hornsby. Uh, solo album Harbor Lights, as well as his third album with The Range, A Night on the Town. Uh, I've got their first two albums. I really like them, so I decided to uh, delve a little bit uh, further on in their discography. Uh, I have not listened to those two albums yet. And then in uh, one of my eBay purchases, uh, we're kind of getting into the eBay purchases now section here now. 
Um, I mentioned when I did my uh, bargain bag video a couple months ago when I had Sarah Brightman as the Spotlight CD of the Week. I think I mentioned that I was uh, I had looked up and bought a couple of other, other CDs on eBay, and that's these two. Uh, Harem I have listened to. I, it was okay. I didn't think very highly of it. I might not end up keeping that one. But this one, Symphony, I have not listened to yet, and I'm really looking forward to listening to this one. So, so we will see. I have good feelings about Symphony. I think we'll like that one. And then uh, in my most recent bargain bag video, uh, I talked about a group called Poi Dog Pondering, kind of a folk rock band or a folk pop band out of Hawaii. And uh, I had their fourth album was in my bargain bag and saw, or their fifth album, excuse me. And I went on eBay and found their first four albums in, in one lot. And yeah, they're uh, self-titled as well as Wishing Like a Mountain and Thinking Like the Sea. I love the title of that album. And then Volo Volo is their third album. And then their fourth album is Pomegranate. So I have not listened to any of these yet, I'm, and I am extremely looking forward to listening to those. And then another group, I bought the Frontman's solo CD. This was a couple of years ago when there was a garage sale in Eugene. Uh, I had had the CD for uh, a long time ago, gave it up in probably a space crunch uh, CD pruning picked it back up at that garage sale and fell in love with it. And so I decided to finally, this is, you know, two years later, finally went and picked up the, the three albums by the band that this guy was in, Tonic. And we have Lemon Parade, uh, Sugar, Brain Fart, and Head On Straight. And uh, they're, they're just excellent stuff. I, I mean, I've, I've had these albums and, and heard them before, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad I changed my mind and picked those back up. As I think I've told you before, at least about one of these groups, I have been on kind of a, a buying binge for uh, these artists, these bands' discographies. Uh, one of them is Bon Jovi, and I picked up three Bon Jovi CDs recently. Uh, these Days, as well as a special edition of Have a Nice Day, which I found at the store in Salem. And also Lost Highway. And this one has a special connection to me, I guess, I, I guess you'd say. I could swear that this one was in my sister's CD collection. But uh, if it was, it did not get to me. Uh, it may have been uh, her husband and his son obviously had the option of picking out whatever they wanted to keep out of the collection before bringing it to me. So that might have been one of the CDs that one of them decided to keep. So I was kind of on a quest ever since then to pick up this album, Lost Highway, because I swear that sometimes uh, I would ride with her when she drove home to California and I would stay there and then fly home later. And I could swear that this was one of the CDs we listened to on one of the drives. So, But that po that point is moot, so I now have the CD. That poot is moint. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be doing uh, videos and considering my mental state right now. Anyway, um, the other artist that I uh, was talking about uh, being on an unofficial quest to uh, obtain their full discography is U2. And I've gotten three of their albums as well. Uh, Pop along with The Unforgettable Fire and War. And so I have, I think there are four or five of their albums, maybe a couple more than that, that I don't have yet. And it's just, sometimes I'm just like a completist that way. I just need to pick up a band's entire discography, especially when I'm at more than the halfway point. It's like, why stop now? You know, I, I'm a compulsive CD buyer, I guess you'd say. And uh, rounding out my list of acquisitions, uh, I mean, there are a few more than this, but this was the ones that I wanted to show you in a video just to avoid my video getting too long. Uh, another one I've kind of taken a liking to lately that I had tried before and just didn't like very much of, but I'm giving him another go, is Harry Connick Jr. And I've got three of his albums, uh, Blue Light, Red Light, and his self-titled instrumental debut, and as well as uh, To See You. I got those three. These three were available at uh, House of Records, and they were like three bucks each. So, and this was, uh, you know, when I had the trade credit to spend. It was just burning a hole in my wallet. What can I say? So anyway, yes, that is my uh, raft of CD acquisitions from my recent buying spree of the last month or so. Well, that'll do it for this uh, recent acquisitions video. Would you guys like to see more of these kind of videos from me? Um, I, I I don't know how regularly they will be. Um, this is the most CDs I bought in the shortest amount of time since probably well before the pandemic started. I mean, I, I buy this many only on my Portland trips usually. But yeah, so as I said, I don't know how often they will be. And also, I, I don't want to get too redundant with videos, you know, because as I said, in my play playlist videos, I usually go over 
a, a fair chunk of what's in my playlist videos is stuff that I recently acquired. So let me know if you like to see more of this kind of stuff. If you don't mind the redundancy, hey, cool. Uh, it'll give me more content to put out. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.